Hello, drummers and other creatures. This is part six of my series introducing you to the joy of jazz drumming. Dang, dang, a dang, spang, a lang, all of that swingy stuff anyway. And in this video, we're going to look at something that, that was really important and really should have been the first lesson, but I think it would have put you off. So I've, you know, lured you in. And uh, I'm hoping if you're still with me, you might decide to follow what I'm going to suggest, which is singing a tune, which I think is a very important part of, of, of any type of drumming, really. It doesn't just apply to jazz, but it's a very integral part in the sense that any jazz-related drum teacher will tell you that you need to be able to sing some tunes and be able to sort of play along and sing at the same time. Now, when we talk about singing a tune, we don't mean ah! Pavarotti kind of stuff or doing anything even particularly tuneful, but just being able to, to sing the tune well enough to be able to kind of know it really well. Um, in this video, I'm going to introduce you to two tunes. They're both very, very simple, and I'd encourage you to learn how to sing them and then, well, follow what I'm going to show you, which is learn how to play the drums and sing at the same time. It has endless benefits, but the main thing is that it really helps you connect with the music that you're playing. And as I say, I mean, I, I always naturally sang stuff that I was playing. Uh, I wasn't always aware of it, but it doesn't matter whether it's a rock song. And I, I never knew the words of things. I'm kind of word deaf. Well, not words, lyrics. That's the correct terminology, isn't it? Must stick to that. I'm lyrics deaf. And I think a lot of people are who like music. And, and sometimes I, I almost forget how important lyrics are to music. But anyway, I'm digressing. Um, I didn't really know the lyrics to songs, but I always knew the tune or the melody and sung along with them. And it's always helped me be able to retain my knowledge of the song, be able to follow, be able to get the groove right. Um, in the case of like swing stuff, it helps you come up with ideas for, for comping patterns or embellishments that you might want to make. It gives you an idea of what the, the structure of the song is in the broader sense. Um, and it also gives you an idea of like where little accents come and, you know, how to complement the music really well. So on every level, I, I suppose, you know, if I was a sensible YouTuber, oh, if I was a sensible YouTuber, I'd be advertising myself. But if I was a sensible YouTuber, I'd also be making like a the top five list of reasons you should learn to sing the tune. Maybe I'll do that even. I'll pander. But anywho, it's super useful. Um, so we're going to look at two really basic tunes. Doxy, which uh, I know of from Miles Davis, I can't remember who, who wrote the thing, uh, and Blue Monk, which I know from Thelonious Monk. Uh, they're both easy tunes. Uh, one, Doxy, is a sort of 4-4-4, uh, four, 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 so like 16-bar structure that follows an A-A-B-A -A -A arrangement, meaning we have a tune, we have a repeat of the tune, we have a slightly different tune, or quite a different tune, and then a repeat of the original tune. So the A section is the same, the B section is different, right? Altogether, it's a 16-bar cycle. It's a jolly tune, easy to remember. Uh, even more so, actually, I should have put this uh, first on the list, is Blue Monk, which couldn't be a more simple tune. It's really cool, it's a 12-bar blues and uh, you know follows the norms of that sort of structure and getting familiar with with these things lets you I don't know you'll find it much easier to follow tunes the more you get used to certain standard forms and so an AABA -A kind of uh, structure you might get 16 bars or more commonly I think 32 bars um, and then 12 bar blues is 12 bar blues isn't it so Let's have a go. I'll start with Blue Monk. I should have gone that way around anyway. Well, we're just going to sing it. Um, and then I forgot the tune. Okay, here we go. Blue Monk. Two, three, four. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Definitely not Pavarotti. Da, 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 Da 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 Okay, find a version of that that I'll try and link actually to a, a straightforward version of that because you've got a lot of um, versions of, of, of all these jazz standards where whoever's playing the main tune, the head as it's known, is 
noodling about a lot and then you think oh what, what's the actual tune here there's too much variation going on so uh, what I'll do is I'll um, put a, a reasonably clear version and link it in the description box of both of these tunes so it's easy but listen to the tune as many times as you need till you can sing it let's do it one more time sorry da 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 I had the dehumidifier on all day, but it keeps the drums highly tuned with nice jazzy sounding. Anyway, so what are we going to do with that? First things first, once you, and as I keep saying, let yourself get reasonably good at the thing before you try and do the next thing. That's, that's a mistake people make all the time, which is like, you haven't quite got something under your belt and then you're trying to add the next layer to it and then everything gets more difficult than it needs to be because we're a little bit impatient aren't we and then uh, we get frustrated so sing the tune make sure you can sing the tune really easy and relaxed you, you know it with 100% confidence now all we're going to do is sing the tune and play a regular swing pattern on the ride with the left foot whichever foot it is when am I going to get used to that we're going to play the ride and the hi-hat foot and we're going to sing the tune. I'll get myself going with a few bars of swing and then I'm going to sing the tune. I don't know, you probably won't be able to hear it over the uh, clamour of the, the drums, the cymbals, whatever. Um, I'll try and get a balance right, but otherwise just sing along with me and you, that'll fill in the gaps. One, two, three, four. Why did I stop that abruptly? I can never really predict what my body and brain are, are doing most of the time. Anyway, there's the tune. Now, the next thing we're going to do, remember that none of this is gonna work out that brilliantly the first time you try it. So it might take you like a week of having a go before this starts sounding remotely like anything, or you, oh, you might just grasp it straight away. Who knows, doesn't matter. But what I'm going to do is I'm now going to play the snare and sing. I'm going to play the ride, do the jazz swing thing. And I'm going to play the snare to coincide with some notes of the tune. Meaning I'm not trying to play the entire tune on the snare. I'm just going to try and let some sort of coincidence occur between whatever, wherever there's a note of the tune. So sing along with me and hopefully my demonstration will show you what we mean. Oh, Let's see if you can hear me singing at all. Ready? Now I need this stick again. One, two, three, four. And there's loads of different ways you could do that. Uh, you can obviously start playing the entirety of the tune in due course, but since I haven't really gotten into the full uh, gamut of eighth note comping snare drum stuff yet, I'm leaving it in a sort of simpler place and we're just dropping in those occasional notes. I hope that made sense. Now I'm gonna use the bass drum in the same way. Okay, one, two, three, four.
Now, ah, the glorious British weather, lighting was, well, somewhat dependent on the sun, no sun today, now sun, obviously sun knows when I'm making a video and wants to get, get into my stuff. Anyway, hello sun, oh, it's going away now. Okay, so, what are we gonna do next? You guessed it, we're gonna now mix up the snare and the bass drum, here we go, one, two, three, four. Get yourself used to that until it feels super, super easy to follow the tune. You can play some snare drum notes and bass drum notes. Your swing remains consistent and relaxed in swinging, obviously, and you're just gonna keep that going until it feels super easy and relaxed. You're in no hurry. Remember, we're not trying to audition for a job fronting a band or anything like that. We're just getting used to that, coordinating the voice, the swing, and putting some bass and snare in there. It doesn't even have to sound like whatever you imagine your jazz playing will be like once you've accomplished whatever it is you want to accomplish. It, it's, we're just getting used to the mechanics of the thing to start with. Now, as you progress and develop into that, you can start making that a bit more musical, adding some dynamics and so on and so forth. But for now, you're just making yourself comfortable with the process. Once you can play coincident to the melody, the next thing to do is use the gaps, fill in the gaps. So we're gonna avoid the melody altogether now, and we're just going to play a snare or a bass note in the gaps between the melodic phrases, like this. There's not much gap-wise there, is there? So it's, that's a bit boring, but okay, fine. We're just becoming familiar with that. You're starting to get the idea now, aren't you? Then finally, we're going to just improvise and allow ourselves to play coincident or non-coincident with the melody, but remaining in the singing state of mind so that we're singing, we're kind of starting to think, oh, I can, I can respond and react to the feeling that the melody, 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 melody evokes. Here we go, one, two, three, four. And there we go, we're singing a tune and we're starting to use the melody. And is that a non, no, not a non sequitur. I just, oh, I can't remember the term, whatever it was. I just said the thing and then said the thing again in a different way. We're singing the tune and we're playing the drums at the same time and trying to connect with the melody, is what I wanted to say. All right, so work on that, get the hang of it. The next thing we're going to do is, is let's have a think about doxy. Again, we said that's a 16 bar A, A, B, A structured tune. It goes like this. ba do ba do ba do ba do ba do 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 ba do ba do ba do 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 ba do ba do ba do ba do ba do 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 ba do ba do ba do 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 ba do do ba do da ba do ba do ba do 
ba do ba do 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 ba do ba do ba do do da I think that was it anyway listen to the tune I will link also now you can do the whole exercise the same as we did with Blue Monk just now in fact you should um, but the next stage of this or maybe this is the first stage I don't know whichever way around you want to do it but we're going to play the tune on the snare drum this time and and in this case I'm going to play all the notes of the tune exactly as a rhythmic statement I'm still not really worried about dynamics or making music as yet I just want to connect my voice to moving my sticks it doesn't matter what sticking you use just single strokes is fine or ah, don't worry whatever happens here we go Now, it's not a bad idea at this point, if you don't find it too tricky, to add the hi-hat foot to the picture one. I keep thinking I need to replace this hi-hat stand. It's very squeaky and noisy. I'm sorry about that. I keep forgetting to replace it. Um, I'll do it for next video. Hopefully I'll remember. One, two, three, four. Okay, straightforward enough. It'll help you develop your coordination if you go one step at a time. But the, the, the snare thing, get it feeling good. Add the hi-hat foot, get that feeling good. When that's starting to feel a bit easy, the next challenge is to move around the kit. I'm not trying to create anything beautiful yet. I'm just trying to be able to sing and hit the drums coincident with that, okay? so. I'm, very, I'm being non-judgmental, I'm just letting things flow as they will. One, two, three, four. Sometimes the hi-hats seem to be filling in there. But let's get the, the bass drum involved as well. Maybe that's easy to coordinate or not. I don't know. Maybe just try dropping in the odd bass drum note into the game and see how easy it feels. One. Okay, and then you're just gonna get yourself really comfortable with that. Now, I'm not taking it much further than that in this video because I think that's enough to be getting on with if you've never done this before. So you've got your swing option and then you've got your playing the melody on the various parts of the drum kit option. And if you can get that reasonably easily going with the, the hi-hat foot, that's also good. It helps you keep your groove going. Although in due course, you might not necessarily do that when you start using this in, in um, I don't know, maybe in the next video already I'll just have a look at getting you into the idea of doing a solo, God help us all, but it's, it's a thorny topic. Anyway, right, we can play the melody on the drums, we can swing and complement the melody. Um, when you're doing this thing as well, we can also fill in the gaps, so let's give one go around with that. Um, 
Since we're not worried too much about coordination, you could do whatever feels right. I, I would always keep it simple, but you could do, I don't know, let's see what happens. <laughs> Doesn't matter, be free, let go. Don't judge, don't expect anything of yourself. Do something silly, just get used to singing and playing these simple ideas. Um, I think that kind of sums up the topic. Oh, you know what, let's just add something. Ah, I didn't promote myself, silly man again. Okay, mm. give me a thumbs up, by the way, if you enjoyed this, if you find this at all useful. I'm about to wrap this up with a little extra thing you can do, but before I do, give me the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you find this at all useful, and most importantly, write a comment in the comment section of this video, because YouTube likes it when people do that. If you think this is great, fine, let me know. If you think this is rubbish, fine, let me know, I don't mind. And, um, you know, let me know what, what suggestions you might have of future topics I can cover, or whether there's uh, ways I could explain things better, or you know, whether I talk too much or not enough, whether I need to do more drumming, or whatever I'm interested to hear. Also, if you like the way I present stuff, um, you can get in touch with me about doing some drum lessons. I teach online every day, or most days of the week, and um, I'm available, I can help you with your drumming. So check my contact details in the description block box below, blah, 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 that's the sales pitch. Now, ooh, and you can buy me a coffee, by the way, if you really feel like it. Right, so when we wrap this up, what we're gonna do is we're going to do the swing option plus the playing the melody on the drums option, uh, and we're gonna combine it. So what we'll do is we'll play one chorus, that's like one go around of the tune, or the head as we like to call it if we're hip cats. We're gonna play the head once, as a swing complementary pattern, and then we're gonna play the head as a tune. And we can alternate that a little bit. And that's where, where you can start kind of dipping your toe into the waters of how you'd be playing uh, jazz in the terms of comping and then soloing. Okay, without further ado, one, two, three. Something like that, <laughs> not much of an Instagram moment or whatever, TikTok these days, but there you go. That gets you moving. Keep singing, singing, singing. When you're walking down the street, sing to yourself. Um, I will get into that a little bit more in future videos, but in the next video, I'm going to um, introduce you to the idea of how this can open the door for us to start learning how to play solos. As I say, can be a bony topic. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll deal with that at the time. Anyway, thank you very, very much for watching this. Um, off you go, go and practice.